it's a very uh, surreal experience in the beginning. You know, you know you're supposed to be on the, on that, uh, or you had the opportunity to be on that, on that sub, and um, uh, you see you see all this. It's everywhere, everywhere we looked. And the most haunting thing about it is when you look at at the news I, and open my laptop on social media, on <coughs> television. It's, it was everywhere, and they'd show pictures of of the the people who lost their lives. And uh, all I could see when I saw that father and son was myself and my son. That could have been us yeah. in that picture. When, <clears throat> when the news initially broke, um, before the news initially broke, when we were considering actually going on the submarine ourselves, um, one of the safety concerns I had before getting on was literally about the structural integrity of the submarine. Um, before we got on, I saw a video of uh, Stockton explaining how the submarine worked with the with the remote and everything like that, and I saw a lot of red flags with it, and it was only meant for five people, and um, I just didn't think that it could survive, you know, going that low into the ocean. So uh, ultimately, I ended up warning my dad about it, and he ended up agreeing with me. And when we tried to ask Stockton questions, he kind of a, uh, you know, brushed it off a little bit. So um, it's kind of red flags from the start, and then when the story came out. Um, you know, on the first day, initially we thought that um, the first thing we thought is that the submarine imploded because it's it's very difficult for a submarine of that size to get to the bottom of the ocean and not implode. Um, but that was the first thing that went through our head: was it either yeah. imploded or it got stuck under the Titanic on the first day? Um, you know, Stockton. Yeah, you know, I think his his heart was in the right place, and he he really was passionate about his project, and he believed everything he was saying. But uh, one of the things that concerned me was he told me he was flying in to see me, and he was landing at North Las Vegas Airport, which is a, an odd selection. Most people that come in privately come into either McCarran, which is now Harry Reid International, or they come into Henderson Executive. And uh, I asked him why, and he said he was coming in on a, a two-seater experimental plane that he built. And I started to think about it. He's coming in on a two-seater experimental plane to pitch me out to go on a five-seater experimental sub that he built down to the ocean floor to see the Titanic. And it was just, it was, it was uh, he has a different risk appetite than I do. Um, I'm a pilot. I have my helicopter pilot's license. Yeah. I wouldn't get into an experimental aircraft. Yeah, he, he came out to Las Vegas in, in March to see me. We, we, we met a couple of times in person, but the March one, uh, the March trip, he came out. He actually took me through uh, the Titanic exhibition at the Luxor, and then we had lunch after. And um, we talked about the ex uh, ex ex expedition that he wanted to go on, and he, talk he walked me through it. And then we talked about the safety concerns. And I think he had so much passion for the project uh, that he was blinded by it. He wasn't objective, and he didn't look at things mm. uh, that I saw and that others saw that were problematic because he it just didn't fit his narrative. I mean, I... It, it's very sad and tragic that I kind of predicted this outcome. My dad was very excited to go and he was very excited to take me because I was obsessed with the Titanic as a little kid and I was really looking forward to doing it. But the second I saw the submarine and how it worked, like I, I knew that one of the first outcomes, uh, me and my friend Simon actually, that friend that everyone was talking about, um, we, we both knew immediately that this submarine couldn't make it to the bottom of the ocean. And it's sad that our prediction came true um, but as far as us doing something like this ever again, I mean, the ocean is scarier than space. We know more about space than we do about the ocean, and yep. it's uh, definitely not something we're ever gonna be trying to do again. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it just was not, not for us, you know?